evening and welcome to another edition of Film Nut. I am your host, Jeff Schubert. Glad you can join us. To catch up on past episodes, you can go to the stream.tv slash filmnut. And to follow us on Twitter, you can go to at the filmnut. And don't forget that in the third segment of the show, we do answer viewer questions. So you can start tweeting them in now or you can do it as we go. As First National Vice President and Screen Actors Guild co-lead of the Group for One Union, my guest tonight, actor Ned Vaughn, has dedicated substantial time over the past two years to help create the SAG-AFTRA merger proposal and bring it to members for a vote. Well, as they say, the third time is the charm. After two failed attempts, the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Radio and Television Artists have voted by an overwhelming majority to merge into one union. What does the merger mean for actors who were formerly in SAG and or AFTRA? What does it mean for actors aspiring to join the union? Here to help us sort it all out is the now executive vice president of SAG AFTRA, Ned Vaughn. Welcome back to Film Nut. Thank you, Jeff. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, for my second time, and I'm I'm, I'm delighted that uh, every time I come on Film Nut, I seem to be bringing good news. So it's a, it's a great place to be. It, it's it's a very exciting time. Uh, for SAG and AFTRA. Now, all the actors out there, of course, are going to have to trash their resumes that say SAG slash AFTRA <laughs> and change it to SAG hyphen AFTRA. That's right. right. I hope that no, no trashing required, just a simple uh, just squeeze them together. Let's, let's be eco-friendly here and yeah, <laughs> use, right. use those that's resumes right. up. Well, let's get some, for some people who might be catching this for the first time, let's just get some immediate statistics sure. out there so people kind of know what they're dealing with in terms of um, what does it cost to join the union, right. can you join, are you already in one union if you're in the other? <coughs> well, uh, anyone who was a member of SAG or AFTRA prior to the merger is a member in, uh, of SAG AFTRA. Right. And uh, certainly members uh, who were members of both unions are of course right. members as well. Um, but previously if you were a member of AFTRA, you weren't necessarily a member of SAG, but now all oh, yeah, AFTRA absolutely. No, we now all AFTRA members are that's right. right. You know, we, we had uh, plenty. We, we had about 45,000 members in common who, who had uh, cards from both unions. But we had, uh, in fact, the largest block of voters in this referendum were SAG only uh, cardholders. That's about 70,000 people who voted in the referendum. And uh, AFTRA had another uh, 30,000 or so that were only members of AFTRA. And now everybody. Uh, it's, a it's a full membership of uh, somewhere about 155,000, a little north of there. It's a lot of people. It certainly <laughs> that's, that's, is. That's, but a big, that's a big union. <laughs> it, it's a big union, but it's going to be the largest and most powerful union in the entertainment industry, uh, entertainment and media industries, and it's, uh, it's a great thing. Yeah. Um, membership dues, of course, a lot of that is based on how much you earn. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the minimums now. What are the, what are the minimums in terms of union dues? Well, the base dues uh, are $198 per year. So for people who were previously members of both unions, they're actually going to see those base dues come down. They were previously at about $243 a year combined. Pay, right. Uh, people who were single card holders are going to have a, a small increase, uh, 116 I believe, for uh, SAG up to the 198 I think 128 or so for AFTRA up to the 198 And then as you mentioned, there... Uh, there's a percentage uh, formula to calculate uh, dues on your earnings. And uh, for people who earned their money primarily under SAG contracts, they're actually going to see that percentage come down uh, from 1.875% to 1.575%, close to that, 1.85 1, 1, 1 to 1.575. Slight increase for the AFTRA only uh, card members. Uh, in the end, though, I think you know what's critical here is that we're building an organization that's going to have better bargaining strength to increase our wages, working conditions, residuals, and benefits, and I think that's going to more than uh, merit the slight increase in uh, base dues for our single card holders. Well, I want to talk more about that, but we do have a clip that you showed in the lead-up to the vote mm -hmm. about leverage, right? Bargaining yep. power leverage, similar terms, right? Mm -hmm. so let's take a look at, look at that and talk about uh, leverage and bargaining when we come out. Okay.
Great, so let's get into that for a minute. Um, now SAG represents, prior to this, SAG represented actors only, after actors and some other populations as well, but basically, yeah. you know, similar artists, if you will, right? Yeah. Now, if you look at the concept of monopolies, the government ten, j, tends to not allow them because that increases the price to the consumer. Com right. Competition creates better prices for the consumer. That's right. And even though you were two unions that represented artists, you were in competition with each other. Absolutely, and it's the fundamental reason that we needed to merge the unions. So by limiting the competition. <laughs> right. You know, in this transaction, we are the seller, the producers are the buyers. Mm -hmm. And we want to get the highest price for our product, which is us, which is the members that we represent. And you put yourself at an obvious disadvantage if you're creating competition with yourself. Uh, so we've eliminated that now, and it's a great thing. Yeah, now, there was, as I said in the introduction, overwhelming majority, right? It was about 82% yes. overall. Well, it was 82% of SAG members right. voting in approval and 86% 86, 86 of, of AFTRA. AFTRA members, that's right. And about 78% of Hollywood's. Or, that's right, of, of SAG of, members of, in, in Hollywood, where, uh, you know, as you know, uh, to the degree, that's obviously where the, the strongest, strongest opposition, even though it was a distinct minority, that's where the opposition lay, and uh, still, 78% of the members of SAG in Hollywood voted to approve this. And some of their concerns, I guess, uh, dating back <clears throat> to 2008 and, and those negotiations back in the 2008-9 yeah. nine era when we had you on the first time, yep. was, um, was after, a, you know, not working with us or maybe undercutting or whatever, and whatever, whatever side you fall on, that, that, that's just now not an option anymore because we're, right. <laughs> we're, we're one. That's right. I mean, that's, that's the reason we needed to do this. You, you know, Ken Howard, uh, the now co-president co of right. SAG-AFTRA, uh, I think he said it beautifully uh, in a video that he did uh, during the merger uh, referendum period. He said, you know, if you have two unions covering one, work poor, one workforce, management will make it their purpose to divide them. To divide and conquer. And why wouldn't they? And, and of course he's right, and we've eliminated that choice for them, and I, I, that was the fundamental reason to do this. Now you mentioned he's now the co-president, so how are the, the, the boards being handled, the merging of all these presidents and vice presidents and so forth? <clears throat> well, uh, obviously his, uh, his, his co-co-president right. uh, is Roberta Reardon, who's the president of AFTRA, the, uh, exactly, mm -hmm. prior to the merger. And uh, for the period leading up to our first elections as SAG-AFTRA, as one union, which will happen in late spring or early summer in 2013, about a year from now, um, we're going to be governed by what's essentially a combination of the prior SAG National Board and AFTRA National Board. So it's a very large board. It's about 150 people. Uh, but we felt that was important because you want to get large buy-in not only from the memberships, but also from the leadership of the two unions that need to formulate this plan, to develop this plan, to go out and promote it and uh, give information about it to the members. And everyone feels represented. Everyone who exactly right. everyone who voted for people in both unions Ex still has their representation. Exactly right. We can get a taste for how everyone's doing, and then have a, an individual. Election That's right. Well, them. we'll have our, our we'll have our first board elections uh, in, as I said, late spring, early summer, 2013, and we are at that time, we're going to elect from zero. We're going to elect every new member of the national board, every member of all the local boards across the country a new president, a new secretary treasurer, and then at the convention which follows, a new executive vice president uh, potentially, and uh, the other vice presidents who are uh, acting as national officers of the union. So it's going to be a, a great opportunity for the members of this new union to exercise their democracy and have their voice expressed, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, and if I remember correctly from our, our first interview, um, Unite for Strength, which you co-founded, correct? Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay, um, yeah. was largely portrayed as um, being anti any kind of show of strength or force or strike authorization or what have you, and and you were like definitely no, it just has to be <coughs> used the right way and and done it in a. I don't want to insult anyone else in a smart way and saying that not saying that someone else wasn't smart, but there was just a definite right and a wrong way to use that tool, if you will, but that yeah. you weren't adverse to using it. In fact, oh, you, heavens. No, you, no, no, you acknowledge no. that it's a very necessary. That's right. I mean, look, that is it, it, the only 
power that a union has at the end of the day is the ability to withhold its services. I mean, that's, that's really where the rubber meets the road for a union. And, and, and what we've done now by uh, eliminating that ability to put ourselves into competition with one another, we've created a union that when the moment comes, if we have to say, no, that won't do, there's nobody else to say, well, yes, it's okay for us. Right. We're the only game in town, and that's obviously a stronger position to so, negotiate. So for. you're not going to be in a boardroom discussing your strategy and have someone come in and say, hey, your competition just made a deal for half what we want. You know, that won't happen again, right? That, that will not happen again. And, you know, look, that what happened in 2008, 2009, uh, it was – an incredibly stressful period for a lot of for actors everyone. because it, it, it wasn't just the fact that here our two unions had, uh, you know, this bargaining relationship that they'd enjoyed for nearly 30 years had collapsed, but that devolved into, it was this public spectacle that really played right into the hands of the producers and you ultimately ended up with, uh, you know, one union uh, effectively waging a campaign against the other's uh, contract ratification. That was unprecedented in our history, and it made a lot of folks very uncomfortable, and that's not going to happen again. Well, let's get to some more of the uh, technical stuff or the fun stuff. Um, wh what's going to be done with wages? I, I know you don't always make the same for a, when you're a guest star on <coughs> a SAG show versus an AFTRA, mm -hmm. or the existing contract's going to expire and be as is, or, or how, is, how is that going to work? Well, you know, uh, interestingly, uh, you actually, at the moment, uh, in terms of primetime broadcast uh, dramas, uh, scripted dramas, you actually like, make a little bit more, more as an after a guest star as right. you, uh, versus being a SAG, uh, under a SAG contract, and that's because of what happened in 2008-2009. Um, what we're going to do, the, the current contracts or the contracts prior to the merger of SAG and AFTRA that existed, those remain in force until they expire. And uh, so we will still sign, for example, primetime broadcast scripted dramas to either the SAG or the AFTRA contract uh, in certain spaces, like cable, uh, where we don't necessarily have an industry-wide agreement. Uh, SAG-AFTRA will negotiate contracts with producers uh, on a going forward basis. But wherever there are two contracts, say, for example, the SAG TV theatrical and the AFTRA Exhibit A, what will ultimately happen is SAG-AFTRA will negotiate the successor to both of those contracts as one union, one contract, and that's eventually what's going to happen to all our contracts, and that's uh, a great thing. Okay. Well, since solidarity is, is always a good topic mm -hmm. of discussion amongst unions, and we want everyone to come together regardless of where you were, now is a time to focus positively and work as hard as we all can. <coughs> Uh, to bring out the best in this, and we'll talk more about uh, health and pension in, in the second segment. Sure. But to wrap this one up, I want to ask you, what is your what is your favorite movie or a great movie that represents um, union solidarity, working together, that, <laughs> that can inspire everyone to come together? <laughs> well, I got it. You know, I loves me some Norma Ray. <laughs> you can't you can't do much better than that for a union film. I mean, right. it, it's really a, a terrific film, and I. I, I I don't suppose I, I am not the authority on union films, even if I should be. Uh, but I also, there's a John Sayles film uh, from the 80s called Mate One uh, that I really love too. It's about a coal mining uh, strike. Um, so there's a couple that stood out for me. I'm sorry, and the title again was? Mate One. Okay. It's M-A-T-E-W-A-N. It's a, a, an area in Kentucky uh, where these coal miners uh, had this real standoff with management. and. Uh, it's it's a terrific film. It's got an incredible cast: Chris Cooper, uh, 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 Michael, uh, David Strathairn, a uh, bunch of other Kevin Ty, a lot of great actors in that film. And I'm, and I'm assuming it worked out well for the union. <laughs> you know, uh, it don't no spoilers. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say nothing. It's just a great film. Great film. Folks okay. should see it. Great. Well, that's going to do it for this segment. We'll be right back with more of Ned Vaughn, and we'll talk about uh, pensions and health plans and all that good stuff. <laughs>